Hi, and welcome to Journey to Journeyman number eight. First of all, I'd like to thank everyone for all the comments and all the help and all the suggestions and, and positive feedback. I, I, I can't thank you enough. It's really, really appreciated. Um, the YouTube community in machining is such a giving community. They help uh, even guys like me that are just starting out, and I can't thank you enough. Um, there were a couple of questions on last episode about why my uh, single point threading didn't work. So on this episode, I make just this simple threaded stud, and it gets used in my uh, mag mount to mount a camera or my lighting. And it's just a, a simple uh, stud that's, that's threaded. And I do single point threading on here, and I wanted to explain to everyone what happened and why it didn't work on my last episode. And here's why. Now the angle that I'm going to be talking about, that 30 degree angle, is the angle of the compound. Just remember that the tool is always 90 degrees to the work. So no matter what you set the compound at, you have to have your tool squared up to the work. Okay, there are uh, a couple of angles here set up. We've got the zero degree, which is like a plunge cut. Uh, also, which is, you know, people talk about the 30 degrees, 29 and a half. Um, but I'm just going to use the 30 degrees here for uh, what we're talking about. And what happened on this last one is um, I'm stealing this from a that lazy machinist and I'm gonna butcher his last name because I think that's French but it's Marc Lecure something like that anyway um, he explains it extremely well and I'm plagiarizing all of this from him uh, but what happens is on the very first thread uh, this one will come in and make a 30 degree V Now this will be the second pass. Now just like that lazy machinist showed it uh, with three passes making a thread, it takes more than uh, three passes usually to, to make the threads, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Now this is kind of a butchered drawing, but I'll show a better view to kind of get an idea of what I really mean by these threads on there. So here's what happened to mine. Um, I had my compound 30 degrees on this axis. It should have been 30 degrees from this axis like this way, but I had my 30 degrees this way. And that's why I had an issue with that. And the way the threads formed on this one was the first one was just like the rest. The second one started off in here, stepped in there. And then the last one. So here's a blown up of the zero degrees. It's just a straight plunge in cut and each time you plunge in you're cutting on both sides of the tool and um, it will form the thread. Now if you do a 30 degree here's kind of how that kind of lays out is the first cut plunge into here uh, the tool slides 30 degrees up here still with that 30 degree and 30 degree forming the 60 and the last pass now it takes more than that but that's just the general idea now here is what I did. I had mine at the wrong angle. And what happens is, instead of plunging in and then sliding along that, when you move the compound, it moves at a goofy angle and puts it like this. And when, you, when it starts this cut, it's over here, so there's a step. And the third cut, instead of sliding along that there, it comes over here and it starts another one so there's a it's a Christmas not a Christmas tree a, a sawtooth pattern on there that lazy machinist is where I got that and he tells exactly you know the ins and outs of how that works but but that's the reason why my threads didn't work my single point threading didn't work the first time 
And one of the things I didn't tell you on the last episode was I did it straight with plunge cutting on there. And you have to be really careful with that, on, especially on a light lathe um, and the type of material you're using because you can break the, the bits. And it's uh, a bit I had in there. And yes, I did break it. I just didn't uh, disclose that on the last one. But yeah, I broke a bit and had to buy some more um, uh, threading bits. Um, anyway, let's take a look at our order of operations. Well, here's the simple thing that I'm going to be making this uh, threaded stud. And the order of operations are... I'm going to cut the major diameter, then the thread diameter, cut the threads, polish it, cut it to link, and then nod at the ladies. Well, I decided to make a very simple little project here, a little threaded stud that will go in my mag mount for my camera and my lighting. And it was so simple, I almost didn't record this. And uh, I got myself my cheap hot rolled metal that I practice on from Lowe's and turned it down and decided to make that into the, the little stud. I do want it to look decent so I polished it up as I was going along with a little bit of uh, emery cloth and some Scotch-Brite. So I need to turn down the part that I'm going to thread and then take the die Put it on the tail stock kind of just to push it on there and very simply cut the threads on there and most of you that have watched my videos realize that most of the time things don't go as planned and this is no different i have no clue why i cannot get this die to uh, cut the threads now these are cheap harbor freight uh, dies and i just i, I can't figure it out so I decided to single point thread it. And since Shars is so close to me, it's just two miles away from my house, I went and bought a little cheap fish gauge. And this is the part that was gonna, I was gonna cut off, but I decided I'm gonna practice my threading out on a part that's uh, gonna get wasted. Make sure that my gear train is set up to cut the correct pitch on there, which is, I do believe, uh, it's Twitter, uh, 20 that is. I'm doing quarter 20 on this. Now, because of my threading disaster from last time, <laughs> having the compound at the wrong angle, you can see I got it at the correct angle now, 30 uh, degrees off of the perpendicular axis. And uh, it, I'm just checking to, to make sure that my theory is right. I think I know why it didn't cut correctly last time. And so I'm going to do full threading out on this expendable piece here just to make sure that it does thread correctly. I'm getting pretty psyched up because it looks like this thing did thread correctly on it. And now, it's time to thread the real part. And guys, there is a sequence here. Most of the guys that are machinists know this, that as you, en you engage, you got to make sure that you disengage it at the right spot, you back it out, and then you turn the carriage and move it down. You gotta do it in the correct sequence or bad things will happen. But how do I know? I know what you're all thinking. Man, this guy looks like a pro. One of the things I hate on machining videos is some guys is the camera goes out of focus and normally I take that and edit it out, but I have to leave some extremely blurry footage in there so you can get the feel of, of what I did on this next thing. Ah. Oh, 
Yup, I jinked when I should have jived. I turned the carriage before backing it out and ran it across three of the threads there. It kind of scraped um, two of them uh, where you can really see it. But I decided, hey, you know what? Let me just keep threading it and see if it works. And much to my surprise, it still worked. Even though it's got a scratch across like two of the threads. Uh, you can only see it on one side of it. But uh, I'm just happy that I was able to get single point threading to work. Off with the sacrificial practice piece. Now that the threaded end is cleaned up, it's now to clean up the other end. Ta-da! And there's the piece. And it's mounted uh, with the light on it right there. And I also, with that quarter 20, can mount a camera on that mag base as well, or any mag base. So. So quick lessons learned. Um, number one, have your machine set up right when you're doing the single point threading. It is so rewarding when you do uh, cut your first threads like, like I did. It is uh, the coolest thing to see the threads forming and all that. But have, it, have your machine cut up right. Take your time and make sure that you're not turning one hand when you, you should be turning the other. And it, it, it's wonderful. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and hope to see you on the next Journey to Journeyman.